back in the browser, refresh, add ingredients, create the recipe. We now get a page full of errors. In case you didn't know, there is an Inertia.js Discord server where people discuss issues, techniques, features, and so on. Recently, someone asked how to put together a form for a model with a has many relationship where they can update or create multiple records at once. So, this is a video on how to deal with form arrays using the Inertia.js form helper. Here I have a recipes controller with a create action that returns a create recipe page component and a store action with some validation in place. Inside the page component, we have some basic markup in place, like labels, inputs, errors, buttons, and so on. The first thing I'm going to do is to initialize our form using the Inertia.js form helper. So I'll do data, return form, this Inertia form, and here we'll pass in our fields. We'll have name, the string, description, which will be an empty string, and then ingredients, which will be an array. So this is our starting point. We have a name for the recipe, a description, and then a repeatable field for the ingredients. So whenever we click on this button, a new ingredient will be added where we can fill the details in and then press this button to submit the entire form. We'll start by writing the functionality we need to fill in the form. So first we need to set up our vModel directives. So we'll start with name and we'll have vModel form.name. Then let's copy this. And here we'll have the description. So vModel form.description. And here for the ingredients, we'll need to set up a v4 so that we loop through the form ingredients and display the name and quantity fields. So we'll have a v4 ingredient index in form dot ingredients. And let's also add a key as the index. Here we have the ingredient name. So we'll have vModel ingredient.name and here we have ingredient quantity. Let's also make the area labels dynamic. So we'll add two dots and here we need to use the index plus one because the index starts at zero. So we need our first ingredient to be one. And then we'll do the same thing for the quantity. And let's test this out in the browser. So we'll refresh, open up the console, and check our view. So we have the create receipt and the form object. Let's type in a name and a description. And sure thing, it works. Next up, we need to add the functionality for this add button. So we'll go inside our component here and add a new method called add ingredient. So methods add ingredient. And here what we need to do is to push a new object inside the form ingredients array. So we'll have this form ingredients push and we need an object with name, which will be an empty string, and quantity, which will be zero. And of course, we need to call this method whenever the user clicks the add button. So here on the add button, we do at click, add ingredient. And let's write it out here, quantity. Okay, let's go back and refresh. And here we can add ingredients. Let's also add a method to help us remove ingredients from our list. So I'll go inside the methods and add remove ingredient. And we'll need to pass in the index 
from the array so we can know which item to remove. I will do form ingredients splice and then we need to pass in the index and the number of elements to remove which will be one. And of course this needs to be called whenever the trash icon or button is pressed. So here we need to click, remove ingredient and pass the index. So now if we go in the browser and refresh, we can add ingredients and we can remove ingredients. Okay, next up, let's create our submit method that will post this form to the server and then see how we can handle the validation errors. So we'll add let submit dot prevent and we'll call the submit action submit method submit and what we'll do is we'll take this form and post it to recipes now let's go back to our browser and submit the form with invalid data so we'll refresh and simply press the button and if we look inside our component under the form object, we see that we have this errors object where we can check the errors. And we get an error for the name, so the name field is required for the description. And then for the ingredients zero, the name is required and the quantity must be at least one. If we add one more ingredient, we'll get another error for the second ingredient. If we add one more, we get another error for the third ingredient and so on. So let's go back in our code editor and handle the easy cases, which are the description and name of the recipe. Here we can do form.errors.name. And of course we need to add a v first. So to check if we have an error, otherwise we shouldn't display this. And we need to do the exact same thing for the description. Now let's go back and test this out. So we refresh and submit the form. We get the correct error messages. Let's also add a, bo a red border to these inputs. And we can easily do that by using class border red 400, let's say, if form dot errors dot name. And the same thing for the description. Go back, refresh. And here it is. Okay, next up, the errors for the ingredients. To grab the corresponding error messages, we can make use of the same v4 loop we use to display the form inputs. So we can go here in our v4, and we can do something like, we know we have form, not errors, and then we need to grab the correct ingredient and we'll do ingredient dot and then we'll pass the index and then the field we need to grab. So let's say name. We'll go with name first and then we'll add the quantity. And of course we need to do the same v if check. So if we have this error, display it. Let's go back in the browser and refresh. Add an ingredient, create the recipe. We don't see any errors. Let's check the view. So we have ingredients dot zero dot name. Ingredients here and here. Refresh. And here it is, name is required. Let's try to push this, this error messages, error message to the right a bit. 
and we'll need to calculate that. So we have two from the flex, four from, from the icon, and two more from the padding. And that will be eight. So we'll have ML eight. Refresh again, add an ingredient, create a recipe, then the error message is now aligned. Let's do the same thing for the quantity. And we'll basically add the same paragraph, but we'll replace name with quantity. Refresh again, add multiple ingredients, try to create a recipe. And we now get the error message for each individual ingredient. Let's also add the red border. So we'll do that in the same way. So we'll need to grab this for the name and we'll have class border red 400 and the same thing for the quantity. Go back in the browser, refresh, add ingredients, create the recipe. We now get a page full of errors. And that was it. That's how you submit and handle form array validation errors with Inertia.js. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And click the bell button. Bye.